Hello and welcome to this updated version of the Absolute Beginners Blender tutorial number 8. And the reason to that is that in Blender 2.63, BMesh is implemented. Let's get started. Press 5 and 1 on the num keypad. We have a cube and I would like to put a sphere on top of it that is one skin with this cube. I go into edit mode and I would like to add this, that sphere. So before I do that, I click with the left mouse button up here. So I move the insertion point for uh, mesh objects and I press Shift A and the UV sphere. And here that is. And before I do anything with it, I'll change the number of segments to 12 and the rings to 8. And as I said, I would like these to be joined. And the first thing I'll do here is to make sure that I have as many edges in my cube that is meeting the edges in the sphere. Uh, and I'll show you exactly why that is. We'll first remove, press A to deselect everything and then do B for box select. And wait a minute, first we have to have the transparent selector on, so we select everything, even the things that we cannot see. B, everything that's behind the selector will be selected like that. If we choose opaque, A, and then I'll do the same thing, then you see only the front will be selected. So I'll choose transparent selector, okay, like that, and then delete those faces. And if I now, and I, I also want to delete this face because I don't want to have internal faces. If I now try to join this loop here, I press Alt and right mouse click, and here Shift and Alt, right mouse click there. If I try to join these loops, W and use the bridge function, bridge to edge loops, then it will say that it has different selected loops must have equal edge counts, and they don't. So how do you do that? Well, one really simple way to do that, or the, the, the way that I have designed for this is, press A here, and I'll select the entire cube, or the box, so to speak, and then we do W, and subdivide, and two cuts, which means we're going to get three edges on each side, which is 3 times 12 is 3 times 4 is 12. And I I would like to extrude this up a little bit so I have uh, you know not that big of a distance between the head and the and the shoulders so I'll extrude that and pull it up like that scale it down a little bit and if I want to make it rounder I could do shift alt s and uh, kind of move the cursor like that, and then left mouse click to confirm. And now, we'll see what happens. Okay, yeah, one thing, you can see that this edge here goes down there, and that one is there. So, we need to select this and then turn it. I will turn it um, like this, R, Z, and that way. And then choose edge loops or like that and then F, no sorry, W and the uh, bridge to edge loops. Turn on the opaque selector so there. So now we can see that those two are connected. Now it's all one mesh uh, and uh, we can select this loop. I would like to move that up a little bit to give it more of a person feel to it. So, um, before I move on, I would just like to talk a little bit about BMesh and one of the differences. You know, this be this bridge tool was an add-on before. Now that's part of the release, so that's a change. And another change is this: if I choose face mode. If we select these four faces, for instance, and then we do 
W and uh, no, we do X, I mean, X and uh, remove the faces, then they'll just be removed as usual or as before, Control Z. But there's also a function where you can dissolve X and dissolve. So now, instead of being four faces here, you have what's called an angon, a polygon with more than, you know, four corners. So that's what you end up having. And that is a, a significant difference from before because then there were no, no such uh, possibility. Everything would be either triangles or quads. So now you can have these angon faces. And it may or may not work really well for you when you're, you know, using, for instance, the, the um, subdivision surface modifier. Uh, such as in this case, you can see how, how you get kind of a crumpling effect uh, because it's, you know, this one face and you have all these, uh, um, you can see how this, this vertex here kind of pull, it pulls on it. So that's something to be aware of that uh, it may not work, you know, for every situation, but in the process of modeling, I'm just going to go to Control Z and just kind of try to. Yeah, I could regret that. In the process of modeling, it could be very convenient to have this angon cover a space while you're trying to make other decisions about your geometry. And especially if you don't need the subdivision surface modifier, if you're doing like an architectural design, like a sketch or something that you just want to make real quickly, then it could be extremely productive to have this tool where you can. Uh, you know, not have to be so concerned with the topology as as you're you know changing your your geometry. Okay, so that's it for this, uh, and uh, I will use the subdivision surface modifier on this, and uh, I'll press A to select everything, and then W and uh, shade smooth. So, and just look at that. So that's what it looks like now. Kind of looks a little bit like a bowling pin too. But anyway, uh, I'll move on and we'll talk more in uh, um, tutorial number nine. So thank you for viewing.